Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so happy that you're part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. Please be sure to subscribe to this show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Daniel M. Warlock. He is back to tell us about his Leap Year series. Before we invite Daniel to talk about Leap Year, we want you to leap on over to the East Boston branch of the Boston Public Library on March 21st to be a part of the Reading With Your Kids Day. It's going to be a great day. We're going to have our Reading With Your Kids magic show, some magic workshops, a parenting workshop delivered by Steve DeRogier's of Boston Public Schools Parent University and so much more. It's all happening at the East Boston branch of the Boston Public Library on March 21st from noon to 3 p.m. We also want to let you know that we will be at South Shore Kids Expo right outside of Boston at Kingston Collection in Kingston, Massachusetts. That's happening April 5th. It's going to be a great time. Again, we're going to be presenting our magic show. We'll also have a totally interactive Reading With Your Kids booth where you can experience what it's like to be part of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. It's all happening April 5th, South Shore Kids Expo at Kingston Collection. Joining us right now from the United Kingdom, he is a, a past guest that has been really, really popular. We're going to be talking about his Leap Year series. It so, makes so much sense since we just came out of February and in this Leap Year. Please welcome back to the show, Daniel Warlock. Daniel, how are you? I'm fine, thank you very much, and thanks for the invite. Daniel, I've had a wonderful chat about Brexit and politics, and uh, we agreed that uh, it would be much, much more interesting podcast if we stuck to leap year. Yeah, we'll t- talk about <laughs> books. Forget about the politics. <laughs> so tell me, so so leap year is a trilogy, a, a middle grade trilogy. Um, That's right. And and the first in the series is Leap Year, and then Leap in the Dark, and the latest book, Leap of Faith, just came out. So why don't we start? Why don't you tell us uh, about Leap Year and some of the characters that we're meeting? Well, Leap Year came out in two thousand and ten, and that was my first children's novel. Um, basically, what it is about is there's three brothers, and the three brothers are in actual fact my three grandchildren, um, and it's become trapped back in time on the twenty ninth of February which is a leap year, um, and to the horror, they find themselves in an old hall, which comes back to life. And if they don't work out a riddle before sunrise, they'll be trapped in the hall for the next four years, which is the next leap year. So that's a kind of edge-of-the-seat um, thriller. But then Leap in the Dark, which came out, I think I published that around about four months ago. Um, it's also, again, where they find themselves in the hall, but under different circumstances. I won't go into too much detail because I don't want to spoil it for them. But then Leap of Faith is last in the series. Now, this was a bit uh, bit different because they, if, if, if they think they put all their frightening experience in the creepy hole behind them, but only to find that someone very close to them is in danger. Uh, and But that is the end of it. I've, I've, and it's quite emotional at the end because there's little things throughout Leap Year and Leap in the Dark that's mentioned, and it all comes to a fruition right at the end, and it's quite a good, I quite enjoyed read, writing the last one, so I say the three of them are out now uh, on Amazon, Leap Year, that's in book form, also download, but Leap in the Dark and Leap of the Faith is just in the download at the moment on Amazon. Wonderful. What a neat premise, the idea of, of getting stuck in a hall and they'd be trapped there until the next Leap Year. Did, did that idea just kind of come to you as a flash, or was there something well, else that inspired it? It's a good question. Is that, don't, the thing is, the old hall was a hall that I used to live close by when I was five, six years old. It was a spooky old hall, and it was abandoned. And I've always wanted to write a children's book, and that came into my mind. But then I wanted to work something around it. And I think it was kind of a leap year when I, I started writing. I thought, wait, wait a minute. I could work that out with a riddle, and if they don't get the riddle sorted out by sunrise, um, also, 
they've also they've got to come out of the hall the way they went in. So they've got to be careful that they make sure that they do everything that they did when they went into the hall, when they came out of the hall. If not, they'll still be trapped in the hall for four more years. So that was something that I built up. I tend to find that I've got the start and the end in, and I just like to build up the middle. It's like painting. Mm-hmm. You build up a painting, you build up a picture, and I've just built it up. But then Leap in the Dark, um, that really is uh, the carry-on to Leap, Leap Year, but uh, there's other characters that appear, and actual fact, in this t- particular case, the three brothers com- are separated, completely separated, but uh, therefore they've got to get back together before sunrise, so that's quite um, exciting. But they say, Leap of Faith, they think it's all finished. They think the hall's back to normal, you name it, but then something else happens, which I say, someone close to them's in danger. That's all I'm going to say, but um, it's a, it's, it was quite an interesting story. And also because it was my three grandchildren, I could see them in the story as well, so, and I knew what, they're, what they were like. So I found, I found it easier to write that particular trilogy. Very cool. You, know, you, you mentioned growing up by this, this creepy old abandoned hall. And uh, life, I think, is is very, very different. I, I don't know if it's like this in in the UK, but here in the states, you know, kids. When I was growing up, you know, it's like your 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 mom took the broom and kind of brushed you, broomed you out of the house in the morning, and said, you know, be back home at dinner. I don't want to see you until dinner time. No, that's right. And, and, and we were left to our own devices, and so we explored. And if there was a a creepy cave or a log or a, a abandoned building. At, at some point, we'd kind of explore. And it, it, I remember exploring some of those places and imagining, letting your imagination run wild. I don't know if kids do that so much these days. Oh, they don't. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I used to walk to school. Uh, we used to play out. We used to come home when it was dark. You know, you'd, you'd come home full of bruises and scratches, but... That, that was part of growing up. I mean, mm-hmm. at, at the moment, I think uh, we're just wrapping up the children in, uh, in, in cotton wool, and they, they need to just get out there and just enjoy themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this old hall, it was, I always remember walking past it uh, well, I, I'm on the way to school, and it had cobwebs around the windows, it had dust all over it. You know, like anything else, you'd have, I was only five years old, and with my friends, we'd creep up to the window and look through it, and, oh, that, that's when your mind goes haywire, but <laughs> a children's um, imagination is brilliant. And isn't it cool that that, that memory that stayed with you all those years? Oh, yes, I know. It did. It, 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 I'm, wish I'm glad it did, in a way, because it uh, it brought out the Leapia trilogy. Yeah, that's wonderful. Now tell us about you, you. You're telling me that the three characters are based on your on your grandkids. Tell us a little bit about each character and how closely they resemble your grandkids. Well, there's James, Thomas, and Jordan. Uh, I mean, James had just turned 18, but uh, in 2010 he was only 10. But they're, they're completely different, really. But um, Jordan's the eldest, and he's the one that's got to keep them all together. Um, James. But we, they call him the squiddle, and he was a squiddle. He used to hoard things in his pockets, like, you know, chalk or string or just just like a knife, a Swiss knife. So they actually they come in handy while they're in the hall. Thomas is the timid one, but he um, he has some scary moments where he has to work things out. But um, as in Leap in the Dark, well, Leap in the Dark actually follows on four years after Leap Year because something happens in Leap Year where... They've got to go back to the hall in four years' time to sort something out. So they end up back there in the hall. So, But I say, I won't, be, I won't say anything else apart from that. So the, there's a reason why they have to go back four year, in four years' time. But then after they, uh, they end up leaping in the dark, something else happens um, where they've got to work something out, say, with someone close to them that's in danger in this hall. One of the things that I, mean, I, I, I loved, there are different times in my life where, where there are certain books, types of books that I love, and then they kind of, I, you know, kind of get bored or whatever, move on. But there was definitely a time in my life where I loved 
these type of stories that where you're, you're kind of in a mystical place and, and the universe doesn't work the same way in these weird places as it does. And there are mysteries and, and, and kind of rules that, that, that are different. And part of the fun for me was trying to keep all those things straight in my mind and, and understand that. I imagine it must be, uh, a, 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 a lot bigger of a challenge keeping those those things in your mind as you're creating these worlds. Oh, it is, and, and the best thing about it, I mean, people t- tend to say that I write in pictures, and I like to write as though it's a, a movie. So I want action all the time. I don't like it being boring. Something's always going to be happening around these three boys all the time, um, and I also like to finish a chapter on the edge of the seat. So in leap year. The three boys actually do get separated. So the story might be about James. He'll get to a point where something's really going to happen to him. But then the next chapter will might be about Jordan. And the same thing will happen to Jordan. He gets into a scary moment. And then I'll go on to Thomas. So the reader's got to go through the chapters to find out exactly what happened to the boys. Mm-hmm. You know, I was having a conversation with my, my niece, who is 16. And I was asking her what kind of books she likes. And she said, I like books where there's a, a, a cliffhanger at the end of every chapter. Oh, it, it, makes, it makes me I want do. to go to the next yeah. one. Yeah, I do. I mean, actual fact, Leap at the end of Leap Year, um, you've got to read Leap in the Dark because something happens. And it's, I, I like to have weird endings, quirky endings where you're thinking, I've got to read the next book to find out exactly what happened. It's the same with uh, the other trilogy I mentioned, too, about uh, the Jake Hollywood trilogy. Uh But here again, I just like children to enjoy. I mean, I've done quite a lot of um, workshop in schools in England and Scotland over the past 12 months. And I just try and encourage children, motivate children of all ages to read, you know, show them that this pages are full of wonderful, magical stories and help them see the fun in reading. And, And I try and get that across by reading part of my stories to these children. Uh, I did a few uh, workshops in Scotland last November. I did, I did the same one the year before. And it was nice that I went into one particular class and three of the children had my books. <laughs> and they wanted me to, write, to, to sign them. And they, th- they all thought it was br- they were brilliant. And the scary one was I, I did one at a campus. And can you believe that there was 200 children? sat in this auditorium, which is the most I've ever stood in front of children, but it went, it went very well. I got them on my side. That's a good thing. That's, that's wonderful. What is it about, because uh, you, if, if I'm not mistaken, you caught the writing bug kind of late in life. Am I right about that? Yeah, I was 60 before I uh, did leap year. I'm actually, well, I'm 71 this year. Congratulations. What is, uh, what, what, what was it that kind of, of, bit you that 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 got you writing at that age well the thing is you you actually introduced me as daniel m warlock but my proper name is michael roland Mm -hmm. and daniel m warlock is an anagram of michael roland Uh, and there's there's probably people are wondering why i've used a pen name it's because that my i've got two grown-up books if you want to call them the first one is 9-11 official complicity which as you'll be able to tell by the titles about uh, 9-11 and last year I actually wrote a true story called Morocco or Bust, August 69, which is a true story based on six friends and myself who, back in 1969, got fed up of the UK weather and decided to drive down to Morocco in a clapped-out van. And that came out last year. Um, But I didn't say I didn't want to associate with two serious books with children's. Uh So when I finished the 9-11 book, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll try work out a different name. So... I've got Daniel M. Warlock as an anagram from Michael Rowland. And then after writing the 9-11 book, I was hooked. And I thought, wait a minute, I'll write for children, because children have a vivid imagination. Um, I wouldn't say they like being frightened, but they like they do like being frightened to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they know that something, something good's going to happen at the end of mm-hmm. the story. Mm-hmm. So I wrote Leap Year. Uh, Leap, now, I'll be honest with you, Leap in the Dark and Leap of Faith, I've had that in manuscript form for the past four or five years. And I didn't get down to finishing it off because I started writing another trilogy, which is about a young boy called Jake Hollywood. Uh, and with Jake, he actually, as he walks to school one morning, he picks up a, an envelope and inside the envelope is a, a newspaper. 
and when he opens the newspaper, it's the on the cover, it's the Titanic. And he suddenly finds himself at the, in the bowels of the Titanic, and he comes across a key. Now, it's believed that if they had found the missing key to the locker that held the binoculars, the crew in the crow's nest probably would have spotted the iceberg in time to avoid the collision. Now, Jake thinks he's found the key, so he tries to get to the captain with this key, but there's other things that are happening around him, um, and you know he's got to find a way of trying to stop in the Titanic sinking. And the next one in the series is called We Are Not Alone. And this one is uh, about Jake helping an alien back to his spacecraft that crashed in Roswell, close to New Mexico, and the, that's based on actual facts. And that's a fact, Titanic is based on facts, because I'm lucky, because I live near Liverpool, mm -hmm. and there's a Titanic exhibition, so I did quite a lot of my research there. And finally, in the series, which was published earlier this year, it's called Three Shots Rang Out in Dallas, which is about the assassination of JFK, which is also based on facts. So the Jake Hollywood trilogy, uh, uh, apart from being edge of the seat stories, they're also a history lesson as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's uh, uh, wonderful. I, I love, I love your imagination. Is have you always had such a vivid imagination? Uh, I would think so. Yes, I have. I mean, I've got probably four or five stories on the computer that I haven't even finished yet. But I've got the titles, and I know what I'm going to write about. But over the past. 12 months apart from uh, publishing Leap in the Dark and Leap of Faith and We Are Not Alone and Three Shots, I've written six more um, Holly Kiske short stories. Now, the 16 short stories in total, Ruth of Little Helper was the first one, which is in book form, and that's about Holly, whose dream is it for a baby reindeer, Hopper, who has only three legs, to pull Santa's sledge on Christmas Eve. But uh, I, as I did six more over the past 12 months, Tricky People, which is about stranger danger. One Good Turn Deserves Another. The Heart of Gold, Sticks and Stones, and Holly Saves Christmas, and Holly's Circus Tree. Now, I've written these for children basically with learning difficulties. They're easy to read, easy to understand, but also it, it, I've written to help young children as they grow up, showing them what to expect, but in a fun and easy way for them to understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talk about that here on, on the podcast, that one of the great advantages of reading with our kids is it gives them a chance to experience different situations in a really safe environment. So some things that, 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 that might, um, you know, like a, be a bullying situation. This is a way to, 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 for them to experience it through the eyes of a, of another character. And it's a way to talk about it with their kids and give them options and, um, prepare them for the world. Well, that's what it, uh, this basically, these are what the Holly Kiske short stories are, you know, about bullying and autism as well, because I worked for the Autistic Society for three years, uh, looking after the gentleman with Asperger's, and uh, while I was doing my training, I was involved with autistic children, I was actually looking after autistic children on a Saturday morning club, and I got some ideas from there, and I, and I suddenly realised there's not a lot of books out there, you know, pointing out what life's all about. So that's the reason behind the Holly Kiske short stories. Well, we're really glad that you're taking the time. And it's amazing. You're, you're t talking about a prolific writer. I, I guess it's just the, you've you, we waited so long to write and you have all these stories. And it's like, I, I got to get them out. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm writing another uh, Holly one at the moment. So it's a bit of a weird one. This is this is where uh, all the mobile phones towers don't work, so children can't use their mobile phones, so they they have to live without them for twenty four hours. So that'd be a good one, won't it? Wow, talk about a scary book for kids to read. My goodness, I imagine <laughs> could send some kids into shock. Oh, I tell you something. I, I did one uh, workshop oh, a few years ago, and I, t I mentioned about it. And when I said, well, you know, what would you do without your mobile phone?" and one girl started crying. <laughs> oh, come on, well, you know. It's frightening. I mean, all right, they're great for emergency for children, but um, after that, they just they just take it. They're not mobile phones anymore. They're just mi mini computers. Mm -hmm. yeah, they they really are. That's one of the things when when I'm presenting to kids, and I mention to them the fact that they they're all carrying around a computer that has more computing power, and this is something that they're carrying in their pockets it has more computing computing power than. All of the computers used to land a man on the moon. 
Oh, let's not get into the land on the moon. I, I, I don't think there's land on the moon, but that's another, that's a story for another, another day. That's another, another book for adults. Oh, it, it, oh it, that's another story I could come up with. <laughs> well, remind everybody where they can go to find out about the Leap Year series and find out everything that's coming out of the prolific mind of Daniel Warlock. Well, they're all on Amazon, Amazon UK, USA. Uh, if you go on uh, Amazon and just put Daniel M. Warlock, Warlock is spelt W-A-R-L-O-C-H, uh, and they're all on there. The, uh, the, fo- the three Leap Year books, the three Jake Hollywood books, and all the 16 Holly Kiss Kiss. And if they do want to look at the buttons by Michael Rowland, the official complicity, just look at Michael Rowland, R-O-W-L-A-N-D, and Morocco or Bust. And just mentioning Morocco or Bust, I'm actually proud to announce that it's been nominated in two awards in America this year. Oh. And the, yeah, it's, uh, it's in the 2020 Top Shelf Magazine Indie Book Awards. And last week it was nominated in the TCK Reader's Choice Awards. So it's not done too bad. That's wonderful. Well, congratulations on, on those awards and congratulations on the Leap Year series and everything else that's happening. Uh, we've had such a great time speaking to the author of the Leap Year series and the Holly Kiss Kiss series, Daniel M. Warlock. Daniel, thanks for being back on the show. Thank you very much for the invite and take care. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Dr. Kim Rome. She'll be here to let us know about Little Blue's Runaway Adventures. If you are the author of a fantastic children's book, we would love to give you an opportunity to tell the whole world about that book. Well, if not the whole world, then at least thousands of people. All you need to do is to be a guest on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. It's fun. It's easy. And it doesn't cost you a thing. Well, it costs you a little bit of time. First thing you need to do is go on over to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the contact button that you find at the bottom of the page. Let us know about your great book. We will let you know about the next easy steps. We want to thank the folks who made today's show so very wonderful. Of course, we want to thank our friend from the UK, Daniel M. Warlock. Be sure to check out the Leap Year series. I also want to thank the members of my incredible team, my producer, Fatima Khan. Thank you for all the wonderful things you do for the show. Peggy Koto, our amazing account executive. She has been such a great addition to the team. I also want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. I want to thank Augie the Doggy for having my back here in the studio. But most of all, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.